I am now dedicating one day to the week where I train my strong point with my weak point. Now, for those who don't know, I'm currently training five days a week and going from a six day week split, it's kind of intimidating to drop your workout frequency to five days a week because you're like, oh shit. All of a sudden, I can't hit every single muscle group twice a week without having some odd weird split where I'm doing full body or half body. Now, I know some people love living the full body life like Jeff Nipples, but if you're like me and you don't want to live the full body pump split or care to actually push beyond RP9 because you actually want to train the muscle with enough recovery in between session to session, then you're going to have a little bit of tough love going six to five days a week. And here's how I'm currently doing it. You got to pair your weak point with your strong point on one day. Now, if you're sitting here thinking my whole body's a weak point, I mean weak point in the sense where you have a body part that's simply lagging in comparison to your other body parts. Now, it's not going to be so obvious if you're in the surplus, but if you're in the cut or have been in the cut and you're in the bulk phase now, you kind of know which body parts kind of just melted during the cut or atrophied. And so that body part that when you're in a surplus and you went into the cut that melted off the bone, that's your weak point. That's essentially the body part that either didn't have enough stimulus or didn't have enough muscle mass in the beginning to actually sustain its size during the cut. And so you lost size. So it's either one of two things. You had a lot of fat in that area or you simply didn't train hard enough for that muscle group, which is why that body part looks like a dried up grape. Prime example of that on my physique, my legs. But we're not getting to that point yet. Because whether you want to grow or not, the name of the game is recovery. And if you disrespect recovery, it's going to backhand you in the face, send you into the shadow realm with anti-gains, potentially leading you to a dual master fight against Yugi Moto's Gaino, of course, potentially speaking. So while doing too much for a muscle group results in a catabolic state in the long run, with junk volume being your absolute enemy, you got to be a little bit selective with the time you have inside the gym. Now, you don't have to absolutely Mike Menzer method and spend the least amount of time inside the gym, like three hours a week, as if it's a flex because a lot of us just like the gym environment and like to train, take our time. You still gotta work hard, you still gotta spend time in the gym, and most of all, you gotta train smart. Or should I say smart enough? What I mean by that is to pair your strong points, body parts that grow easily on your physique, body parts that you never struggle to have on your physique, with body parts that are absolutely atrocious. Now don't clasp oh, your hands shit. like, oh great, I know exactly what this needs. The answer isn't deadlifts. The answer isn't more volume. And certainly the answer might not be what you've already been doing for your main days. So unlikely you've been watching why I've been doing this video, but if you have, what you should notice is I haven't really done a free weight movement for my shoulders. I've done a free weight movement for my chest, of which I deem my upper chest, my upper back as weak points for my physique and my shoulders as strong points. I'm still training my strong point, but I'm simply taking a movement that is less fatiguing overall, such as a Smith machine overhead press seated as my only anterior delt movement. Of course, I'm not going so easy on the side lateral delt because you can never have too much of that or the rear delt, but ultimately you need to to make sure that the flow of your training makes sense to you. You tend to suffer from junk volume because you do too many compounds at the beginning of your workout. Try doing less compounds. The Rio's twins might hate this, but you know what? Free weight movements aren't superior for building muscle mass. Now I love them as the next bodybuilder Damn hater, true. but you have to admit that the lack of stability creates unnecessary fatigue from the stabilizers in the beginning of your training, which by the time you get later in your training to other weak points of your body part, you're going to be freaking fatigued. You might still get the workout done. It might be a tendon workout, a workout where you don't feel much in the muscle itself, but you feel like you're going through the motion. In which I'd agree with Mike Menzer, you might as well just do one set and get the fuck out of the gym. But no, you don't want that. You want to build a solid physique. You want to lift to make sure that each rep counts and isn't a waste of your time because of junk volume. So after addressing the body parts that just require work, like upper back, upper chest, rear delts, it's important to address how you're going to execute because certainly if you try to do hard compounds on all these, you're not going to be able to keep up the intensity. You're not going to be able to keep up the volume or a combination of all or none. I really don't know your split, but you got to check out some peach supplements because they're pretty proper. Keep me fueled. But John Meadows made a strong point about recovery. You cannot chase everything as a natural, even as an unnatural. You can't chase every single weak point on your physique at the same time by doing six days a week training because in the long run of your training, you're going to benefit way more from doing five days with an extra day of recovery. Your five day a week split does doesn't have to be neglectful of certain body parts, just add in an upper body day. I was against an upper body day for a while, but an upper body day all has to be really is a strong point and a weak point tied together. And if you hit legs twice a week, it should not even be a part of your weak point day. And legs, you can even pair smaller muscle groups with it. Just mind you that legs are such a big muscle group on your body that it is very taxing. And the workout that you're going to have with it is probably not going to be so great if you're trying to bring blood flow back up to another body part. And if you're ambitious, you could simply treat your upper body day as an extra day to hit the frequency of every single muscle group a little bit more if you do not have a suffering or lagging body part or do not know if you have a lagging body part because you know what? You'd be able to adhere to higher frequency training from six days to your five day split. So if you made it far in this video, please like, subscribe, comment below. Thank you everyone that used Code Justly for huge supplements. Thank you everyone that used Code Justly for Young LA. Also apply for coaching. I decided to extend coaching applications. Looking for some serious clients only and specifically keeping all my batch spots to 10 at the moment. Whoa, whoa, don't leave yet. I wanna show you my juicy pump from this workout because uh, I wanna prove that like, you know, the workouts kind of work. So 
This is how my fat ass is looking, about 219 pounds. Look decent in the compression. It's a life hack, go Jesse Young LA, get your compression now, superhero. As you can see, I hold a lot of fluff weight around my core. Uh, shoulders are always deezed. They're never a weak point on my physique. Uh, upper chest kind of looks a little soft, but it's a work in progress with the pump. Obviously it looks a lot better than it is. Now here we're gonna see the back. So much better than before in my opinion. Uh, the delt is still capped. The rear delt's a little small still, but the side lateral delt is popping. And we are looking like Big Chungus McGee. Peace.